Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Crypto EMC on this lovely Monday. My name is Rudo, and I'm known as the chart artist. With me is my trading buddy, Fibonacci Lee. How are you doing, my friend? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Must answer that question. <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Yeah. Uh, we were thinking of rebranding this channel to uh, EMC Sports. Uh, I think that that's got a nice ring to it. But for the sake of our subscribers, and uh, we, we, we're going to leave it at Crypto MC for, for today. Um, yeah. Lee, we had a bit of a nice rally over the weekend. Uh, Bitcoin did show a little bit of life. A lot of people got excited uh, and subsequently that failed. So we, today we're going to show you why, how you can look out for that in the future and as well what you should be doing when this happens again. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, with us, we're going to be, it's going to be short, it's going to be sweet, and it might even be fast. So, uh, Lee, let's get cracking, buddy. Let's go. Let's do this. All right. So, let's start with you first. We've got a Bitcoin chart there, buddy. What is it that we need to be looking at? Why did we have a pump? Can you maybe explain that? Let's start with that. And then we take into, you know, all the next steps. Okay. I'm going, I'm just going to start with a higher time frame, weekly chart, because we had a weekly close yesterday. Um, it closed at 50,000. Really nice, really, really, really nice weekly close. Remember from the last Monday, previous Monday, we we're always watching this 48,000 table and why it's so important to me is that we have to close every single week above this 48. Uh, so we are we are good. We are really good for now. I mean, last week was fine. <laughs> who who knew? Who could believe it? Last week was a green candle. Okay. So opening of this of this week um, weekly candle, it's still red, but um, that's fine. We've got another week to fight against um, the bears, and um, yeah, and hopefully we're gonna close another candle above 48, which can show a little bit of strength from the from the bullish side. Coming so back, it, just just yeah. to reiterate, why the the rally? So the weekly candle close is the reason why. Um, we, we we explained this on a while back. When we have these type of corrections, Lee, if you can show me that. That nice thick 48 line there. Ah, uh, yes, awesome. We showed you the significance of this level. And if we really want to be consolidating, we would like to consolidate above this level because not all 48s are equal. As you see, the first 48 to the left hand side of the screen was seen as a positive 48. The second time round, people were buying the dips at that 48. The third time round, that 48 was a sign of hope. The fourth time round, 48 was, we're going to go to the moon. And now we're back at 48 and people are fearful. So if we look at the amount of times that price, and if you actually swip, switch to the line tool, you can easily see the amount of times that price went through the 48. And, uh, and that is the significance of 48 at this stage. So the weekly candle close means that that line that you see there, gets to print another dot above the 48 level. And that is almost like an early indicator for the bulls to start rallying, to say, okay, right, there's strength in the bulls and there's not that much strength in the bears. So maybe let's start fighting. Okay, Lee, move yeah. on, buddy. Okay. So now if, if I'm bullish, when and where can I enter a trade? So I'm basically going from weekly chart to the lower time frame and look for any opportunity for me to see any sign of the bulls out there uh, because it looks like you know the bears are getting tired of this sell-off. The bears need to don't have the power anymore to push the price down to 48. So if I'm a bull, I want to see on a lower time frame, do I have any sign that's giving me any bullish signals? So on a daily, 
um, unfortunately, I don't know, let me know guys on the comment if you see any, any sign of strength. Um, I've got this RSI here and then do I have my daily chart? This is my daily chart. Okay, I'm just going to put the daily chart here. So RSI is not showing me any sign of um, strong signal. We can argue that maybe, maybe, maybe not even. On the on, so on the line on the line I don't have, but on the um, on the candle, we did have from this low to this high. And RSI from this point here to this point here, we did have. What is that, Rudo? Can you tell me? It's Lower high in RSI and higher high in closing price here. Didn't hidden bearish divergence. Okay. So, guys, so, in the chat, please let me know: is a hidden bearish divergence a trend reversal divergence, or is it a trend continuation divergence? Okay. So we have this hidden bullish divergence, and after this. We had one green candle, two, two green candles on daily. We have a small correction. And maybe if that is at least an ABC, we maybe have an A and small B, and we can have a small C, a C wave. Okay. So that's the one little sign that I have from the bulls that maybe we can play this to the upper side as three wave up. But we can agree now that you know, the general trend is still down right we are still below these two trend lines that i draw one in yellow one in green uh why two trend lines because for me the yellow one was the first one with this this pivot here and this pivot here we tried to go above this trend line we failed tried to go above you failed try to uh, go above that trend line and we fall, failed so coming back above this yellow trend line we will hit now another trend line the reason the resistance one if you take a trend line from that pivot here to that pivot here. So below these two trend line, the momentum is still bearish. So now either I play the hidden, bearish, hidden bullish divergence on where A, B, C, and I will be very careful by test of this trend line because the main momentum is still, uh, is still bearish. And if RSI is doing like this, come back and we're going to push another wave higher, we will hit Assuming we will hit this green trend line as a resistance, what can we expect on a trade on a RS on a daily daily time frame? We can expect a same high or higher high in RSI and a lower a lower high in price, and that will bring us what would that be? Higher high in uh, RSI and lower high in price, a hidden bearish divergence at that stage. So yes, we can we can be a little bit bullish here, but coming here, the bulls will face a lot of resistance. One is the trend line. Two, a potential hidden bearish divergence here. All right, and we have the test of the such a two on a fib level here. Uh, no, twenty three six. Sorry, that is the twenty three six from the top uh, to the uh, from the bottom to the top. Twenty three six. That is according to your strategy, uh, Rodo. When price close, open and close below 23.6, it always come back, almost always come back to test this 23.6 to give you another opportunity to get out of your long. So that is your get out of jail ticket, guys. So when we reach that 23.6, any position that you have that's got you in a compromised state, that would be the time you need to make a decision. Because when we lose the 23.6, we will always go to go to the 38.2. But then thereafter, the, the 618 is always in, in the cards as well. So just keep that in mind. Mm. You cannot be you cannot be blindly bullish at that stage because first I don't I don't see any kind of impulse wave. So this is for me still a correction wave. A correction wave within a downtrend. The 23.6 is at $53,000. Uh, so assuming if the price, like I said, if the price goes a little bit above, but you're going to still face all those bearish divergence. Okay. So it's a, the target to become bullish currently sitting at this level. If you want to trade, Rudo, you want to trade, you, go, you want to see something like this, making a higher high, come back and buy the, the demand zone. Right? 
you want to see the price to go higher high beat this previous high because this is your bearish engulfing structure that's a tough and, call and it's the target is high i mean we're sitting at forty-eight thousand. do you want us to go to 59 another 10k above our current price to turn this bullish momentum so if the bulls are really crazy and they wanna they wanna go crazy high and beat and go erase all those bearish signals and go straight to the 61 wow good luck a lot of work and then come back to this to this so what could be the other scenario take it step by step if i am a, if i am bull what will be my strategy in this in this time in this kind of market condition i know that we have a bearish trend line so why don't we waste a little bit of more time i know that i've got already a bullish um, hidden bullish divergence why don't i waste a little bit more time let the price waste more time here within this area okay go through this trend line so at least we will be on the other side of the trend line. So now the momentum can become a little bit more bullish. And then even if I do that, I come back. You know, I've got, I will have another bearish engulfing structure like this. But then from that target, assuming I'm coming to 41, I will have less higher target to go in order to have to make a higher high. So ideally, I want to see the price going above 5152, 50, uh, 51, 52 K, making a higher high in this smaller range, come back, and then making another structure here to give me a higher high. Now we can maybe trade. And we will be on the other side of the trend line. And in terms right. of RSI, I'm giving up this. I will let the bears hit the down. Okay, but here maybe I will have another divergence to go higher. Now I can climb higher, and my target to beat the bear to, to beat the bull, sorry, here will be more realistic. Right, Lee. Thanks, buddy. Okay, guys. So the long story short realistically from where we at that higher high target on the larger time frame is scary on the lower time frame we do have additional scenarios where we can start planning to trade remember i always say in these you know lateral trends is kind of my my speciality so what we have is we've got a, a very strong why is my screen not there I'm telling you StreamYard's acting up guys this time it's mine that's not showing um we've got a very strong downward trend like Lee explained to you guys and uh short term that's the first high that needs to go out I went onto Twitter and explained that to you guys I said that's the high that needs to get beaten the reality is if we want to really start reversing the only bearish engulfing structure that we have is there so on the daily time frame, that is going to be the area where I would want to see price go. And that's a big ask. So what I would want to say is the more time we spend wasting here, the better for us. Why I draw this in this specific way is you can see that we are looking at A, B, C, A, B, C correction waves. No impulses. There's no strong trend going to form. And these impulses are going to take their time. Oh, these corrections are going to take their time. And at some stage, we're going to get at this level here to show, hey, the bears are losing ground. But we're going to have a final bearish engulfing structure, which at that stage should be manageable, meaning that we will be able to impulse past it. Maybe with a one, two, three, four, five, or whatever the case might be within the uh, the candle wave progressions that we have there. So your job at this stage is to sit on your hands and to look and to let the market fight it out. We said last week, we said this thing to you guys. And I mean, I hate the saying is because it's an ugly saying. Lee, what's that ugly saying? Is the bulls make money, the bears make money, and the pigs get slaughtered. And the reality is if you look at if you look at what, what's happening over here now, the the bulls are over here. 
That's the bull's territory. That is the bear's territory. And anything in between that area is where the pigs will be trading and getting slaughtered, which means that they're going to do whatever they want to do. If you buy here, you go there, you hope for more, and it doesn't get there. It dumps down. You sell immediately, and then it starts pumping. And, and, and that's how they just bounce the ball between those two levels. So just make sure you don't get caught off the wrong thing. But, Lee, wait, before we go further, buddy, let's, let's just do something before we go further. I want to bring up this tile. $100 to 1 million strategy revealed. We get a lot of questions on this. We get a really a lot of questions on this. Lee? Why can't we do that now? Except the timing, the, the, you want to build. The timing is yeah. The timing is wrong. Help you guys, but why is the timing wrong? Well, the the strategy was to make like at least ten percent of each trade and compound it. But technically speaking, can you make ten percent every day or every trade? And is in that kind of market um, environment? No, you can't. And it's you know we can make one, two, three percent. I mean, over the weekend, I took a long at 48 and I closed it at 50,300 to be safe. Because I know that the maximum capacity um, of the market right now is just to give you a small, you know, small gains, not like uh, there's no impulse. There's small scalps, yeah. So what are we looking for, guys? What are we looking for to, to start this? Because we get a lot of people asking us now, and, and, and I actually want to answer you guys this today. Um, when we look at Bitcoin, and I'm going to go... We can stay, we can probably stay on the daily in relation to what we're looking at over here. If you look at this scenario here, now logarithmic actually puts this into perspective nicely because it, it, it now these price brackets are based on percentage gains and not on price itself. So the size that you're going to be looking at and the scale of this is always going to be the same. So when we're in a market that trends strongly we're currently not in a market that trends strongly why do we say that because if you look at where we are now this is january so in february the 9th of february we were sitting at forty-eight thousand, and we're still here it's december come on that's a sideways pattern if ever there was one so we we're trending sideways so what we want to do is we want to be in a scenario where that sideways trend, and there's another scenario. That was April, and that was July, where we were going sideways, nothing happened, and then we started getting a trend. Now, to take $100 to $1 million in 100 trades, you're probably going to need 200 trades, Lee, isn't that? Well, not 200 trades, probably not. <laughs> The success if rate the is bigger than that. If, yeah. Yeah. If, if our success rate is 50%, which means the first trade I give you, you make 15%. The second one, you fail and you get stopped out with 5% loss. You're up 10%. That's the, that's the idea. So we want to give ourselves enough room because we're going to be looking at a lot of coins and a lot of trades. You want to be doing that when you've got a market that is doing this. Because your, your chance of getting stopped out is going to be way less. So you're going to want to be jumping between alts when there's a trend in the market that's really aggressive. And uh, we don't have that at the moment, guys. And there's a, there's a big perception out there that just because you're a professional trader now and you can trade, that you should be trading every day. I know Lee loves to trade every day, but Lee <laughs> knows the limitations. Yeah. And... Uh, he knows not to look for a, a 200 percenter <laughs> or a 20xer in a market that we're at now. He's going to be looking for smaller gains because realistically that's what the market gives you. So on the 100 to 1 million guys, that is not a sales gimmick and it wasn't a, a, a ploy and we're not going to be doing it with leverage. Leverage is the easiest way that a newbie can wreck himself. So stay away from leverage. We're going to be doing that in a condition that it really helps you. And uh, on that way, guys, please hit the likes and the subscribe button because 
and and go to the Discord, go to our 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 platforms because more information is going to be shared there and going to be made available there. And I'm telling you now, we're building a powerful something there in the back end that's going to make this journey easy for you guys. Yeah, Lee, what else do we need to do today, buddy? Well, we can go to even smaller time frame on Bitcoin so we can see clearly what's happening with those uh, divergence. And to finish, we can go to a much bigger time frame to see what is our ultimate uh, target for this bull run and when, really, realistically speaking, when we can expect this target to be hit. And I do believe that we have the same kind of analysis by doing two different methods. So okay. yeah, to bring a little bit more hope in this uh, this market, because yes. I feel like Let's... everyone is a little bit scared, okay. and you know they're a little bit uncertain of the which direction the market will decide to go, um, and probably because I mean a lot of people were believed that we're gonna hit 100k end of the year, and it's probably not gonna happen. Um, so I would like to bring some more optimism, opti uh, some more optimism, up <laughs> optimism. <laughs> optimism <laughs> <laughs> to the yeah okay guys so, so um, before before we do that then i want to ask you guys we pick uh every day we pick somebody to join the early supporter role so lee what should they be writing in the chat today for us uh one dollar 100 to one million maybe that what do you want them to put there oh any, anything up to you though okay $100 to 1 million campaign. Just write that in the chat and then Joe at the back end will quickly have a look. Uh, and uh, and we will select another winner. Uh, and no, we're not going to write Verstappen in the chat. <laughs> this is a non-F1 channel. Only dedicated to crypto. Let's leave it there. <laughs> okay, Lee. What, let's bring write it. anything. Manchester United. Messi, Ronaldo, you know. We'll have another okay. Messi against Ronaldo, probably two, two other ones guaranteed, which is nice. Yes. Okay. Okay, um, let's quickly let's quickly have a look at that uh that short term chart of yours. Short term, I mean eight hour chart looks really similar to the one day chart, but you can see now why did we get this candle here? All right. Bearish divergence, hidden bearish divergence. RSM making higher high. Price is making lower high. Now, if I am a bull, do I have any signals right now as we speak that I can enter the market based on this daily or eight hour charts? No. I mean, clearly eight hour chart is busy playing this bearish divergence to the downside. My next signal on eight hour chart will be this. RSM making us equal low or lower low and price is holding these pivots. Okay. If at our chart, I see price above this line 46, and RSI is coming to this kind of level at 33. Now I've got a signal to push the price higher. But right now, as we speak, there's no signal if I'm a bull to try to enter a trade at 48.8. Okay, this is eight hour. Um, Please. Let's see if, yes. Um, are you going to dive into a smaller time frame now? Yeah, quickly. I'm just just gonna finish with four, one, and fifteen minutes. If 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 I can see any trade that we can take right now as we speak, um, four hour same. We had this. This is the same signal as a bearish one. So we're going down. So four hour same. Do I have any signal to to take a long at that stage? No, I don't because RSI is still high and then price is still at that pivot here. I don't have any bullish divergence on four hour. So for our, the bulls needs to wait a little bit, don't trade. And then what do I have? Let me see on one hour. Do I have anything on one hour? One hour, um, there, were, there, there was a signal for one hour using this pivot here. Hours I come back to this low, make equal low, or li even a little bit uh, lower low, and price was holding at that stage here. So that's why we have this one, two, three, four, five hours of green candle from this morning three. 249 okay and then after that the bulls can momentum with those hidden bearish divergence on, on higher time frame and that's much price down and finally on 15 minutes uh, let me open this 15 minutes charts let's see if we can find something for us to trade um 15 minutes is turning bearish because why rsi is making equal high or it's going to do a higher high and those two pivots will be at 49 and 49.3 
So if the price is coming just here and RSA is making higher high, chances are the bears want to uh, push the price down on that 15 minute chart. Okay, so for now, on a smaller time frame, the bears still have the control of the price action right now. And that's done for do BTC like, on a smaller time frame, yeah? What I do like, if you go back to that 15 minute, is you see this area here um, where FTX is written on your chart. Just move your mouse down and then you'll see that there's a big green candle there. Yes. If I look at that area right there, uh, that wick, go down, go down, right there. Yes. Yeah. That area there, what's the price point on that? That's 47 Okay, drag that across. So if I'm a bull, that's going to be an area where I'm going to want to recycle my money. Yeah, so that's exactly what I'm saying. Um, if you take this price with that hidden bearish divergence, smash it down, the price come to this area, what we will probably have if we can make a bullish divergence like this, okay, even from this area to this area. So that will be your sign to take another long. But this pivot here must hold on 15 minutes. Very important. You can't go below that. Mm -hmm. But that's a little bit yeah. long for an area, but you can probably see this, this bullish divergence on higher time frame, on one hour, two hour, or even four hour time frame. What you also shouldn't do is you shouldn't take this by and think that this is the one that's going to take you to 100K. No, now. no, this but we, we just price. saw on, we, we're talking about 15 minutes time frame or one hour, two hour, and we, we, we just told you that on daily, eight hour, there's nothing really bullish right now. Okay. Awesome. Lee, now, you built a nice chart here. Mm. And I like this one because it reminds me of one that I did a while back. And guess what? Lee managed to mathematically get to the same answer that I did with a completely different strategy. So I'm really excited about this chart and uh, well done, buddy. So uh, please explain to us, what are we looking at here? Okay, so this is the BLX chart. Um, if I want to touch two words on BLX, this is my BLX chart on a logar logarithmic scale. And basically, basically that's the history of BTC. This is the chart where you have the longest history on the Bitcoin price action. It comes from 2010, where Bitcoin was it sixteen at one cent, to and it takes where we all the now. exchanges, take all the exchanges. So and then and this is the monthly price. chart, monthly chart. Okay, one candle equal one month. So now, from the old time loan PTC when it just get created and launched zero point zero one cent to this top, I, I draw I put an info line. It took eight bars, which is two hundred forty three days to to have from all time low to the pre, the first peak okay and then after that we did we did have a correction from the peak to the the next the current the next low that we can see on the chart so if i take my fib level and i take i put the first click here and the second click here the reverse fibonacci level we we always talk about 1618 to 26183 3618 and if I compare this throughout the whole history of BTC, we can see that the 2.272 line of the FIB extension here makes a lot of sense. Why? Because the next high, the next top that we can see on BTC in 2017 ended up at around this area, 2.272. If I take now this 2017 the top, same strategy now, you take the same FIB. Apply the same FIB with the with the law that is coming later on, on to, in 2015. Coming back to that extension, 272, I'm getting 14,000 here, but um, precisely we went to 19,000, I think, on that 2017 high. Okay. So now, if I take another one from the 2000, 2017 high, 19,000 to this March low at 3,000, I apply the same FIB, the same ratio at 272. My Realistically speaking, my target is 204,500. 
200,000, I mean, $204,500, more or less. You can go, you know, 10, 20,000 above. You can, you can, you can be like 10 or 20,000 below. If history wants to repeat and if those charts, those ratio is working like it worked in the past, there's no reason that you won't work this year or this for this bull run. So that's why I'm saying my next target for this bull run would be around 2000K and not 100,000K and not 1 million, but 2000K. 200,000K. So at 200,000K, I will definitely, you know, take profits according to these charts. So that's one. So that makes my target for 2000K for this bull run. The second one that I did, uh, the second analysis I did on the chart is this yellow line, this yellow, this yellow vertical line. These are the years and the months Prime of the Bitcoin halving. So the first halving was November 2012. The second halving was July 2016. The third halving was November 2020. And the fourth halving will come in 2024, right? So now, that study gives me the first one, we don't, I mean, the creation of Bitcoin. So, but the first one, from the all-time low at one cent to this high at $31, it took eight bars, 243 days. Eight bars, okay? The second one, after the halving, from the halving dates or months to the, or to the, to the high, the next high before the bridge correction, it took 12 bars. Now, you take 12 divided by 8, it will give you the ratio in terms of time, how long, how much longer the, the price he reached uh, all time high after the halving. So 12 bars against 8, you have a, you have a coefficient of 1.5. Now, after the, after the second halving, to reach the all time high, it took 17 bars. What is the ratio here? 17 divided by 12, which is this one, it took the coefficient that we have is 1.41. So assuming we are hovering every time there's a there's a halving, we will reach the all-time high at one stage. But what is the time period that's gonna take? We've noticed that from the beginning it's taking longer and longer. The first one was only like 243 days, the second one is one year, the third one is almost one and a half year. So if the series is correct and we are taking much longer after each Bitcoin halving to make an all-time high. So if I take now these 17 bars and I multiply by 1.5 or 1.41, if you take an average between 1.5 and 1.41, it would be like 1.46. So if you take a, multi a coefficient between this uh, 1.4 and 1.5 times 17, which I did here, I times 1.45, can be 1.46. So it gives you more or less 24.65 bars. And if I apply, if I apply this from this one here, I mean, um, 24 bars from this halving here, it will bring me to end of 2022, November, December, 2022. So if that calculation is correct, if this coefficient here are correct, then I'm expecting a big one all time high at 200K and it will only happen end of 2022. Does that make sense to you guys? So guys, you really need to like this chart because my version of this uh, plays out not in November, but in October of 2022. And my version goes to $243,000 or $243,000. So between the two of us, we've now got a ballpark figure between November and October next year, between 200 and 240,000. That's where we see the long-term trend end up and play out. I mean, that needs to be exciting. I mean, triple nine, if you guys are excited about so it. So one year time, guys, one year. In one year, we will have maybe this 200,000 BTC. And we are only at 40 something. Is that not exciting for next year? <laughs> but, 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 this is a prediction, guys. It's not us saying that that's how it's going to be. This is us knowing and applying what we know with TA analysis and looking at the possibilities along the road things might happen that changes that so you can't now just go and sit back down and say right while i'm in now i can go and i'll see you guys next year because what if there's a world war that breaks out in two, two months from now that picture might change 
there's things and there's a lot of time there for things to change and change the variabilities or the variables that we've now considered. So just keep that in mind going forward, please, guys. Lee, I really like this chart, buddy. We should make this your screensaver. <laughs> right. Okay, cool. We need to pick somebody. We need to pick who is going to be our new early supporter that joins the Discord support early supporter role. Uh, Joe, bring up the name. Who is the winner there, buddy? Scott Sharwood. Scott, well done, buddy. Congrats. Please go to the Crypto MC Twitter account. There's the Twitter handle name now. And send a DM. And we'll make sure that you get onto the Discord and get that early supporter role. For anybody else, I mean, we are still growing. There's going to be more and additional things we want to do. Um, the early supporter role comes with a little bit of perks. Uh, as those were the hardened um, people that stuck by us while the mics were bad and they weren't lighting and all those things. And it's just our way to say thanks for them because, you know, um, we are still learning and growing. We're still new. We, we're in our second month now. So, I mean, and we've got an a amazing following and an amazing support an amazing family behind us. So we want to thank each and every one of you guys because awesome, awesome, awesome. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. Right, Lee, what else have we done uh, or st uh, that still needs to be said? Is this anything we've overlooked? Let's mm. quickly see. Let's quickly go through the chat. Maybe there's a question that we can answer. I saw a question earlier. Let's see um regarding the bitcoin dominance uh so lee do you mind opening the chart for us while i scroll up and get that dominance chart uh question where do you have a question? dominance chart ready because i've got only the i've got an echo here i've got only the bitcoin let me check here. i've I got dominance. a dominance chart ready you know me and my dominance yeah I, I, of my dominance um so i can quickly do that i've got my elliot wave count on a dominance chart so <laughs> yes i'm expecting it to go down and then we have to go we have to push up so i'm excited about this dominance uh this drop probably is not really i mean for me when dominance is losing like this and especially if bitcoin is weak uh it just means that uh, alt is gonna beat even more than compared to bitcoin and then after that, we will see first the reaction on BTC because now, um, I mean, for me, the whole market has eyes on BTC and you know, what's wait for the BTC next move before the alts can uh, really grow. And I think the old went too parabolic in the past, and there's a lot of all that need to retrace and you know need to shake people out of the market before the next run. Well, you said it all, um, guys. I think that's it from us. Maybe there's any more questions. Or maybe we can do one more question. Um, let's quickly see if there's something. Here we are now. There's a lot of football questions here, Lee. <laughs> uh, I know. I know. We only we just had this uh, European Champions League draw, and I'm excited. Like I said, to play Manchester United again. Last time we played against them, we just kicked them out. So hopefully it's going to be another <laughs> another one of these. Uh, I picked the wrong one there. Where is that comment now? Does it make sense? Let's quickly see where is, where is your, where you're hiding. Does it make sense to get out of some alts? Lee, well, it's a I tough mean, one. There's, we don't there's so many alts right, right now out there, you know. I mean, they all, all have like really, they bleed it a lot. So I'm in tune with my risk management. Even those entries that I pick between the 618 and 760 zone are losing kind of momentum, but it's just the phase. I mean, we went early in this entry. Now, I just want to see the price consolidating within this area, going, on to, going to the other side of that bearish trend, and then we should be good for the beginning of the next year in terms of old as well. And obviously, if you have bought those old at the high, and that's why you need to learn, you need to remember, remember now, when you see something going parabolic, there is no no use to chase the price. Always wait for this retrace. And if you get them at the retrace, then be patient because now we are studying this daily chart. When the price is dumping like this, then they have they need consolidation phase. 
before the next run. The longer the consolidation, the better even. Um, because that means that more gets absorbed. And I see there's another question here. I don't know the name. It looks, maybe it looks like a barcode. But it says, how do I trade? How do I not to lose BTC value when I'm all in alts? That's a tough one. Lee, what can you say there? Well, the best trade is to trade all second BTC. So if you think that your order is losing momentum, it's more like turning bearish against Bitcoin, rather buy Bitcoin and give up your holds if you want to be still in the market, uh, you know. Um, so, yeah. So what I like to do is, to, to touch on that is, to the left-hand side, when I set up a chart, I'll, I'll name one specific to the alt. This is my Cardano chart. I've got many of them which are the ones that i like okay so what i'll do is i'll look at those and then i'll look at it the price on dollar i look at the price in compare it to the bitcoin pairing so this is cardano's com uh, performance versus bitcoin i'll look at the price compared to ethereum cardano's performance in relation to ethereum and then i will even look at the future price if it allows me a future price then I take all this evidence and I decide, am I buying and I'm buying to make dollars? Because if my goal is to make dollars, I don't really care what I'm buying. It's just whether it's going to make me dollars. So that's where it becomes very gray, your question. Because if your goal was to make dollars, um, the Bitcoin pairing is not that relevant. But if your goal was to just make Bitcoin, you don't want to be looking at any coin that's in the dollar buy zone because it's irrelevant. You want to be looking at coins that's paid against the Bitcoin, but just the catch. You might still be making more Bitcoin, but it means that this can happen. This, this rally to the upside where you think, ah, I'm making more Bitcoin. This whole scenario here could happen while Bitcoin is dumping. It means that your alt is maybe dumping less than Bitcoin is dumping. So that's the hard part because it's not as clear cut as that. So yes, at this scenario, Cardano is losing ground to Bitcoin uh, and uh, rightfully so. I want to wait until Cardano breaks that bearish trend. But what is my goal? Am I, do I really want to make more Bitcoin now? I don't, and this is maybe a little contra, uh, uh, controversial. I don't like to make more Bitcoin in a bull market. I think the farming for Bitcoin and the farming for more coins needs to happen in a bear market. In the bull market, your goal is to grow your, your wallet, to grow your, your portfolio, to grow your buying strength so that when we turn long-term bearish, you can actually sit out and say, right, I'm out with these. I took my profit as, I, as it went up and now I have buying power to buy with the whales. So maybe just lay that in in your in your analogy or in your analysis when you look at something to outperform Bitcoin, whether that is going to be really a good goal, because at this stage, Cardano is not going to be outperforming Bitcoin, but it might just do that for the next two weeks, and then when Cardano moves, it in the dollar terms might not be in a buy zone anymore, but that's only when it starts outperforming. And then what do you do? So now you're sitting on the side, second guessing, should I get in? Should I not? Because believe it or not, nobody wants to lose dollars either. So it's a, it's a really a hard one. You're going to have to draw a line in the sand and choose. I'm fine losing dollar value or I'm fine losing Bitcoin because there's going to be a bear market where I can farm my Bitcoin back or there's going to be a bull market. It will correct my dollar balance if I give it time. Okay. Lee, buddy, anything else? I think we're done for today. Yeah. <laughs> Want to end it? Let's keep the rest for tomorrow. Guys, please hit the like and subscribe button. I think we forgot something. What did we forget? I don't know. We'll re roll member tomorrow. Guys, please hit the <laughs> like and subscribe button. Thanks for joining in. Oh, yeah. This is what I wanted to show. Uh, uh, let's, let's bring the sound down. You know when the bull market is going to start? 
when the amount of people that tune into these YouTubes are at its lowest. Think about this. People do not want to deal with bad news. So when the market turns bearish, people want to turn their back, back on it. How many times have you looked at your account when the market is booming just to remind yourself of how successful you are? Ask yourself now when the market's dumping, how many times a day do you do that? And that's the same. So that would be the strongest indicator that you guys can use. Look at the way that people, the, the, the daily views on YouTube, on specific YouTube channels. And when they start picking up, it's about time for you to start thinking about getting back in. Um, Lee, that's no, that's, for that's, me, is when they're all going to shout hodl and diamond hands and everyone you, on Twitter. Yeah. Then you're going to buy the, the next dip. Uh, and, and everybody hates that there is no more dip on those jokes with the guy naked in front of the ATM buying the dip is that those jokes mm. come up probably true. That another way to look at it. Um, awesome. Let's end this. Cheers, guys. Lee, let's bounce. Hi, guys. Did you get your bouncing ball? No, I'm driving now. I'm going to go get my ball now. Tomorrow, I, I will be bouncing. your Bitcoin will not go up without your bouncing ball. So maybe I must delay the buy for another two weeks then, Lee. <laughs> the longer we go sideways, the more aggressive the pump. Yeah.